What's going on Port fans, welcome back to another video on the channel and today we're going to review Port Adelaide versus Collingwood. Now you might think, Anthony, why are you reviewing this in the car? Well, one, I've had a very, very busy weekend so I do apologise for the late review and two, um, I thought it'd be nice to be feeling a bit more homely and being inside the car um, and essentially, yeah, that's about it from my end. But let's review the game, Port Adelaide versus Collingwood, another nail-biting finish that Collingwood prevailed in. Well. It's been pretty much the story of the whole year, and all you have to do is pretty much smile, nod your head, and keep on moving forward as a Port Adelaide fan, because it's pretty much everything that's been on the script for the whole year rinsed and repeated itself coming into the game, and we expected, I expected a close game of football, um, I, I didn't think Collingwood were going to blow us away at all, and um, I think that's that stage in the third quarter when it was four goals up, I almost expected us to come back at some stage, and we did so in that last quarter. We started to um, you know, put the pressure on. I think we played a pretty good brand of footy in that last quarter. Obviously, we just had our opportunities that we did not take. And overall, that's what cost us the game. I think, um, you know, especially in that second quarter, you, know, you had three shots on goal, and it's a goalless quarter, a, a staple in Ken Hinckley's 10-year tenure um, that's been happening, a goalless quarter. But then the third quarter comes along. It's almost um, you get blown away in 10 minutes of footy at the end of the quarter. Same in the first quarter, like we had a really, really strong start to have six goals to two. We took our chances. We were gifted a couple of goals, um, and then naturally we just became. We looked like a fantastic uh, football team, but when it came to the latter stages of the uh, of the first quarter, put the cue in the rack, and that almost just switched the momentum for the day. Collingwood came out in the second quarter, um, dominated play, and we didn't really look like we were going to stand a chance. Um, in, in general play, you know, uh, we overhandled the footy quite a lot. Um, we, we're missing targets. Skill level um, is definitely something that's going to have to be looked at in the off-season. And that's been, you know, obviously a, a, a key point. But I think looking at recruiting some real skillful, talented players in the draft or looking at um, you know, their abilities from other teams as well, if we can recruit a couple of skillful players that can roam around in the midfield or you know, across half-back, because our half-backs, whilst good, Houston, Burton, I think are very, very good, and they're up there in, in probably our A-grade best. You're looking at Burn Jones, you're looking at Bonner, you've got these, these guys that run and burn the footy, and you know, Burn Jones has been someone that I've really not um, looked much to in, like, into in terms of his form. He's always bounced back, or he's always been putting body on the line, but at the moment, it's it's almost becoming a bit of a... You're in the leadership group for what reason, Darcy? Like, it's very questionable. Um, and his form has been absolutely deplorable. I know he hasn't been that running halfback flanker that we've come to know and love and hasn't showcased any of that in recent times, which has been such a shame because, you know, he was born Port Adelaide in his first game against Essendon back in 2016. He kicked the goal with blood on his face and everyone thought, this is, um, is going to be something. His kid's going to be good push come to shove it's 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 that slump in your career and he's at that crossroads at the moment as a whole you know you just you just come to expect what happened on the day Collingwood fighting back after being four goals down in the first quarter they take the lead go four goals up they've they've dominated play and then they took the foot off the gas just a little bit and we attacked and yeah, a couple of dumb decisions late in the last quarter as per usual um we seem to make these mistakes uh, a 50 meter penalty given away and Costly, costly skill level. One person I do want to touch on who deserves massive praise is Jace Burgoyne. 17 touches, kicked a goal, was absolutely instrumental as a young player. And in his third, fourth game, he looks comfortable at that level. Put a bit of size on him and he's gonna he's got that pace, he's got that skill set that I'm talking about. It's just becoming he will become a player. He's definitely someone that's gonna be long term for us. And it's great to see the Burgoyne name. Um, you know, having an impact again in, in footy, which is it, it's a real positive. Um, and I think, you know, he will be very unlucky not to get a rising star nod this week. I can roll off the names that were good. Rosie, Boak, Wines. Um, you know, they kick, they kick crucial goals and Power Pepper's last quarter was instrumental, pretty quiet for the rest of the day. The game on the weekend particularly showed me the, it was, well, it was obviously clear the weaknesses that are there. They always showcase every single week, but it, if you don't use this game as a blueprint to what's been wrong in 2020 2022, 
then serious questions will have to be asked as about what we're reviewing. Because overall, Collingwood, whilst good, they play a good brand of football and know how to win, which is a very, very crucial to the DNA of a winning team and of a, of a contender. Whereas Port had that last year, and this year lost it completely, and that's why we weren't playing finals. And it, it shows that Ken Inkley's now said, we're just not good enough. I'm sorry, Ken, but about six weeks ago, I would have said that and against Richmond when we couldn't beat them at the G um, and had that awful, awful second quarter. It's been second quarters the whole year as well. That's been the really disappointing thing. You know, we've worked hard on creating a good first quarter, matching it with teams or beating teams in the first quarter, and then bang, the second quarter we switch on, oh, switch off. It's almost like a, t- a different tale because in the first half of the season, it was the first quarter. And then the second half, it's been the second quarter. And, and that momentum of the second quarter is crucial. They, they say the premiership quarter, the third quarter. You have momentum going into halftime and you come out of halftime with your flat, you're, like, you're looking for a response, something to make you respond to have that premiership quarter. You don't have any of that because the second quarter had no momentum. You, you lost everything. There's only been a couple of times this year where we've come out after having a shit second quarter, and that's Geelong, and that's Carlton, where we really come out and said, nah, I'm not going to stand for this. Well, our fight as a football team this year has been something I'm really impressed with. Our fight and our nature to win the footy back and and bring the game back into a state where we can grab it. Unfortunately, we spend all that time trying to get it back that in the end it just slips away from us, which is the sign of a team that's obviously, as Ken said, not quite good enough. Overall, Port fans, I can't really state much more other than I just can't wait for this season to be over. It's been a pretty... Pretty long year in terms of the the stature of how we've gone and, and the momentum and just it's a draining season when you're an almost team, you know. You, you now we have to accept that we're nowhere. We've got three games to go. Play Richmond, Essendon, and Adelaide, who all are plucky teams. Essendon at Marvel's going to be tough. You know, Adelaide have beaten Carlton, and it's a showdown. So you never know how it goes. We could very much end the season with another three losses. I don't want to believe that because we're a better side than what it shows on the um, on the ladder, obviously, but also the last three games. We don't deserve to lose these last three games. And I think the goal has to be let's go out and win the last three games. And I said this last week, go out and win the last month and have some momentum going into the end of the year, into the preseason. These three games are very winnable. Obviously, it's tough to say we can have some momentum going into the preseason trying to beat a Geelong, Collingwood, um, Melbourne as such, but these are the three games now. You've got a game against Richmond on a Saturday night in front of the Port Faithful, our last home game that's not a showdown, Essendon away, and then you have the showdown. And the conversations around people, about their careers, about coaching situations are going to happen. Three games of football to Prove something that you're not really going to make much of a statement, let's be honest. But if you're a player, you've got three games to create momentum for yourself. If you're a coach, you can't do much more at the moment. But, you know, you try different things. Have a go at something else. Play around with the team. Do something different. Bring back a few players in. Give the young kids a go. Something's got to be tried and, and you know, fail with error. So be it. Port fans won't give a shit. When I say we won't care, I'm saying we won't care if you try this and it has to fail. Like We will accept that. We just want you to go out and win these three games. Try something and it fails, so be it. Win these three games of football. That is the challenge for Port Adelaide. 60,000 members was absolutely superb to see. Everyone's staying on board despite the decision, uh, despite the opinions of many. um, And many of those opinions come from people that don't have memberships. But Even so, they're still supporting the club. They're still wanting the best for the football club, for what the players are. And, you know, we're the heart and soul Port fans are. So, you know, credit to everyone for sticking on board. But we should be rewarded. So hopefully the last three games is a bit of a reward, three wins. um, And then from then on, 
we make the hard decisions. Thank you for watching, poor fans. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the game and the whole situation with the footy club in general. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content. That'll come your way for the rest of the year. AFLW not too far away as well, so make sure you get on board and support the girls. I'll be doing a couple of videos each week about them as well. So that's to come very, very soon. So keep an eye out for that. But other than that, my name's Anthony, and as always, come pair.